everybody knows somebody who either has been pregnant with twins or who is a twin. I think I probably have about five or six friends that I know of at least that are twins. And some of them that I found out later in life, they were like, oh yeah, my twin brother. And I was like, I had no idea that you were a twin. There's actually a national twin day and there are specific days in December for complications associated with twins because there are so many different complications that can occur. So this is really important to me because I have a friend that recently had twins and did have some of those complications. And so I wanna make sure that you're aware of some of those complications and what you can do about them from your standpoint, if you indeed are pregnant with twins. So many various complications for the person carrying the twins, as well as the twins themselves. So today we're gonna to talk about twins. Welcome to the Dr. Lexi Show, where I break down pregnancy topics into simple terms to help you advocate for yourself and your pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi, a board certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist, which just means a high risk pregnancy doctor. And today we're talking about twins. Before we get started today, I wanna to make sure that you're aware of some downloads that you can go to to help you advocate for yourself during your pregnancy. DrLexiHill.com backslash advocate will give you 13 general questions to ask your OB provider. Also, DrLexiHill.com backslash aspirin is gonna be a handout that can really, really help you understand what aspirin is used for in helping to prevent preeclampsia in certain instances, particularly in twins. So that's a little handout that you can go to and check out. Finally, don't forget, if you yourself are pregnant with twins or just wanna learn more about it, there are tons of resources on my podcast, particularly about different complications for twins, as well as two different videos you can find from a friend of mine who had twins talking about how they found out they had twins, like when they saw the ultrasound and realized there were two in there and not just one, how her husband took that news and some of the complications that she experienced associated with the twin pregnancy. It is so great to listen to Sierra's story because she really talks about how she advocated for herself during the pregnancy, as well as in the postpartum period when she experienced some complications. All right, let's start now with building a base. Let's start to expand our knowledge surrounding twins. So you always hear, or at least in general, I hear, people refer to twins as being fraternal or identical, kind of indicating that fraternal means they're not genetically the same, identical meaning they are genetically the same. So in the medical world, we use different terms. So people will say fraternal, and in the medical world, to us, that means dizygotic. Also, people will generally say identical, and in the medical world, we will say monozygotic. So the question is then, what's the difference between dizygotic and monozygotic? Let's tackle dizygotic first. So we're trying to answer this question basically of where do twins come from, right? Like how do they get to the point of being identical or not identical. So those that are dizygotic, which make up about two thirds of all twins, those are considered different. Dizygotic, different. These are the ones that people typically refer to as being fraternal in lay terms, okay? These come from two separate zygotes. One zygote is made up of an egg and a sperm. This other zygote is made up of an egg and a sperm. This is an egg and a sperm, this is an egg and a sperm. This is a zygote, this is a zygote. This is a baby, this is a baby, okay? They end up making two separate babies, two separate sets of genetic material that are growing within the same uterus, okay? So those types of twins have two separate placentas, two separate gestational sacs, which we call the amniotic fluid. So we will always call dizygotic twins the ones that are not identical, that are genetically different, that come from this egg and sperm and that egg and sperm, we will call them dichorionic, diamniotic. They have two separate placentas, two separate sacs. These are the ones that people call fraternal twins. Now let's get into the type of twins that become a little more complex. Now, these are gonna be the ones that people are calling in terminology in general that you may hear, identical okay these are the ones that come from one zygote so this is one egg and one sperm 
that is made a zygote, and this zygote then splits, okay? So these pregnancies are called monozygotic. These are the type that are considered identical, all right? Now, little bit of complexity here. These make up about, in general, one-third of all twin pregnancies. So recall that dizygotic made up about two-thirds. Monozygotic make up about one-third. Then you get into a little more detail, is that monozygotic twins are not all created equal, okay? They can go from a certain risk to a higher risk and then an even higher risk depending on the time at which that one zygote that came from one egg and one sperm, when did it split? Because it's got to split at some point to make two different fetuses, okay? The earlier that one zygote splits to become two different fetuses, we'll say two different twins, twin A and twin B we call them, the earlier that split occurs, the more different these two fetuses are. So if that split happens within the first two to three days roughly, we call them dichorionic diamniotic, two separate placentas, two separate sacs. If that split happens more like three to eight days, now these are classified as monochorionic diamniotic. They'll have one placenta, but two sacs. Then we get to the splitting happening about eight to 13 days. So remember, now something else is gonna be more alike because we've waited even longer for them to split. They've been hanging out together longer. Now we call this type of twins monochorionic monoamniotic. One placenta that they're sharing and one sac. Okay, one placenta, one sac. So they are really, really close inside that gestational sac. Finally, the last thing we get to, what happens if they split after 13 days? They've been spending a lot of time together, okay? These are conjoined twins. So next question here, what are the risks associated with the twin pregnancy? Now, a blanket statement, we'll start with that first. There are risks to the person that is pregnant, things like high blood pressure, including preeclampsia. This is where that handout at drlexiehealth.com backslash aspirin is super important because no matter what type of twins you're pregnant with, you're recommended, as long as you don't have a contraindication to taking it, to take a low-dose baby aspirin because the risk of preeclampsia, high blood pressure during pregnancy, that oftentimes has other things, lab abnormalities, protein in the urine, even some symptoms like headaches, that risk of preeclampsia is so high in a twin pregnancy, no matter what type of twins you have, a baby aspirin is recommended to start around 12 to 16 weeks and continue it throughout the pregnancy. Other risks for the person carrying the pregnancy, things like gestational diabetes. Also, you have increased risks for preterm labor. Now, if we look at the fetuses themselves, what are the risks for them in the pregnancy? Blanket statement for twins, things like being born prematurely, things like growth restriction, and finally, things like stillbirth, where a fetus can pass away in the uterus before they're born. Now, those risks, blanket statements. When we go through those monozygotic twins that we reviewed already, those can have more and more risks when they are more and more alike, meaning if they share a placenta and then if they share one sac. So the risks increase substantially. This is where you really can go to the podcast and find different videos on specific risks for monochorionic twins. And that means those are the ones that share one placenta. All right, so now that we've expanded our knowledge, let's go forward and develop some skills. So since we know that there can be so many different risks and that those risks can be associated with the particular type of twins that someone were to have, first question, and one of the most important questions to ask your provider, what type of twins do I have? The earlier that you can figure this out, the better. Some type of ultrasound in the first trimester is very, very helpful. And I'll put up on the screen here what you can see. We do look for something that's called a lambda sign. And sometimes people call it a twin peak sign, tomato, tomato, whatever you call it. If we see that early in the gestation, we can label that pregnancy as being dichorionic diamniotic. 
two placentas, two sacs. Then we know that although someone's at risk during that pregnancy for carrying twins, we do not have to jump into the risks for those that have one placenta. And that's where the risks really increase for the fetuses during the pregnancy. Second question, what is the plan for me having whatever type of twins I have, right? What is the plan for me with this type of twin pregnancy? Talk to your provider about how frequently you're having visits. Talk to your provider about how frequently you need ultrasounds. Depending on the type of twins you have, the ultrasounds may be more frequent. Next, ask your provider, what's the plan for me? If I'm carrying twins, what do I need to do differently? Always a prenatal vitamin. Now you'll be recommended to take a low dose aspirin. You also should eat a little bit more as far as kilocalories per day because you're carrying two babies, not just one. Now that increase is only like about 300 kilocalories per day, not like double. So make sure to talk to your provider about that. Eating more protein is important, those types of things. Also, ask when your diabetes screening is being performed. A lot of times we do this screening 24 to 28 weeks. You may have other risk factors for gestational diabetes. So ask your provider when that's gonna be performed. And then finally, don't forget to ask what you're gonna do for screening for the risk of preterm labor. Typically a cervical length is checked at least once in your pregnancy, right around 20 weeks. Different people manage this differently. It'll depend on a lot of things. Your obstetrical history. If you had preterm labor in a prior pregnancy, talk to your provider about how you guys together will screen for and evaluate your risk in this pregnancy for preterm labor. And talking more about the plan for you during your pregnancy, lots of appointments, lots of ultrasounds, okay? The ultrasounds are gonna be to watch the growth of the babies throughout the pregnancy, and sometimes to do other types of ultrasounds to screen for risks, particularly in those types of twins that are monochorionic, the ones that share one placenta, okay? And if you have that type of twins that are monochorionic, if they're sharing a placenta, yes, those would be considered identical twins because they would be monozygotic. So many terms here, it can be so confusing. The other thing is don't forget that when we were expanding our knowledge, we learned that stillbirth can also be a risk. So there's something called antenatal testing. It's also called fetal well-being testing, fetal monitoring. It's very, very confusing. I suggest that you go and check out a download I have, drlexihill.com backslash fetal testing. And in that, you can see the different mannerisms or the different ways that we go about performing fetal well being testing, which we also call antenatal testing, fetal monitoring, those different things. There's a whole separate YouTube on it as well if you want to dive into it deeper and really understand some of the terminology surrounding it. Next question for your provider. When is it recommended that I deliver? Now, twins, by recommendation, should be delivered prior to your due date. So there's a video on this too that's called, What is My Due Date? And you can find that on the YouTube channel. But it will go through how we figure out your due date. So on your due date, you are exactly, with the calculations we use, 40 weeks and zero days, okay? A twin pregnancy is recommended to deliver before 40 weeks and zero days meaning before your due date. Now, depending on the type of twins you have, that recommendation will change. For example, if no complications are had during your pregnancy with twins and you have the dichorionic, diamniotic type, you don't have diabetes, you don't have high blood pressure, no complications, babies are grown well, everything looks good, right? Your recommended delivery time is in the 38th week. All right. Not only is the timing of delivery important, but the mode of delivery. You got to talk to your provider about that. Everybody needs some counseling with regard to C-section, attempting a vaginal delivery. What do we do if one delivers vaginally and then I need a C-section? These are big in-depth discussions and counseling sessions to have with your provider before you deliver. Okay. So that you can get all prepared for that. Finally, next question here. Where am I supposed to deliver? Now, as I mentioned before, twins are gonna be delivered a little bit before your due date, okay? Before that 40 week mark. Now, 
everybody is individualized. So talk to your provider about what gestational age are you planning to deliver? And then does that change the hospital in which you need to deliver? Every hospital has a different level of neonatal ICU. So you need to be able to ask, hey, where I'm delivering, what's the level of the neonatal ICU? Are they prepared to handle babies that are born at a certain gestational age? All right, let's do a quick little recap about some twin stuff, okay? I would say thing number one, if you are pregnant with twins, make sure you talk to your provider about getting an early ultrasound so that you can figure out what type of twins you have. Big thing number two, talk to your provider about taking a daily low dose aspirin. People that are pregnant with twins definitely have a higher risk of types of hypertension during pregnancy, particularly preeclampsia. So we wanna make sure that you're able to advocate for yourself and do all you can to decrease those risks of preeclampsia or a type of high blood pressure during your pregnancy. And thing number three, talk to your provider about delivery planning. A couple of questions within that type of delivery planning. Mode of delivery, vaginal delivery or C-section. What are y'all talking about? What position are the babies in? How does this look, right? Talk about your prior history. Have you had C-sections before? Have you had vaginal deliveries before? Then gestational age for delivery. Individualized care for this. How are the babies growing? What type of twins do I have? And then let's figure out the gestational age at which I should deliver. And then within that, what hospital am I delivering at? Because every hospital is a little different on how low they will go for the gestational age for delivery of babies, twins or not. All right, so we've gone through those three things to recap a little bit best we can. And don't forget so many different things for you to look at, downloads, videos I mentioned, I'll make sure to include all of those below. The fetal well-being testing, which is the drlexihill.com backslash fetal testing that talks about fetal monitoring to make sure that they are checking the well-being of these twins throughout the pregnancy when it's the right time to start doing it for you and the type of twins that you have. And as always, I'll finish up with impact. My whole goal in doing any of these videos is to have an impact on individuals and their pregnancy to ultimately help them in having a happy and healthy pregnancy. Twins, oh my goodness, so many risk factors for the person carrying the babies and for the babies. How awesome to have some knowledge underneath your belt going into the provider office and asking them those important questions early on so that you are armed with all of the tools that you need to prevent as best you can things like preeclampsia, to be sure you're screened for diabetes and making sure that those ultrasounds are being done to check the growth of both of those babies and doing fetal monitoring and understanding what that means. I hope today you have learned a lot about twins for some general knowledge, also expanding your knowledge a little bit more, developing those skills to ask the questions. And remember, ultimately the goal here is to have an impact on you and your pregnancy for a happy and healthy pregnancy. Like these could be twins, but they're definitely not identical. I wonder if Mark Johnson knows that I continue to use this throughout my videos. Um, this one I use to explain growth to patients, and this one I use, oh, to talk about a uterus and how there are round ligaments and how if we didn't have round ligaments, the uterus would be like a bobblehead, like Mark Johnson. So these are about the same size here. They're definitely not identical. These would be fraternal twins.